So this is a 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, I was having air suspension issues. And what would happen is the vehicle would not lower, but it seems like it would raise. When it raised, I couldn't get it to come back down. So uh, I went through a lot of checks and things and, and tried to figure out what was going on and it wasn't very easy to do. So I thought I would at least let people know if they have this problem um, that here's things I did and here's what I did to fix it. But as you can see, I mean, I have the car sitting down in park mode, so it's low, but the problem I didn't, I did not have a problem with the airbags leaking and it dropping. I had a problem with it staying up. So I have a video here of changing a valve system out, and I'm gonna talk about that now. So here's the valve that I ended up replacing thinking this was the problem. Uh, these, these are, you'll see when I do the video that these are like the rear and these two are the front. This one's the pressure. This one is kind of uh, uh, like an outside air type one. It's not a pressure at all. So either it's a release or an intake just in case. And you can see that it's controlled uh, here by this plug. Um, this is the, this is what, you know, holds the pressure to each bag. Uh, and so there's like solenoids in here and these come out and then there's a little collar in there and that collar, you, uh, slide on the line and then you, you slide this on line, slide that on line, then you tighten it in here and it crimps on that, the line. I just kind of wanted to explain that to you. This is what I thought it was originally until I started doing some more research and I changed this and it didn't seem to make a difference. So uh, I had to move on to something else and I had to figure it out. So what I figured out was this was not the problem. This was the problem. And I didn't quite understand that because this pump would run and it would run and it wouldn't go up or down. So I thought, that's why I thought the valve block was the problem. But re in reality, this has a valve in it also. This has what they call a reversing valve in it. So this will pump air and the valve will go one way or the other, depending on if it's trying to fill the tank or trying to fill the bags. So that was what my problem was. This valve, wherever it is exactly in here, wouldn't allow the pump to put pressure back in the tank. It would only allow it to put pressure in the bags. So this is what a pump looks like. Um, on this side here, you have an airline that goes here, just like that brass fitting I just showed you, here and here, and this one, goes to just like an air vent. And, then, and there's an elbow on here. And how to take that off is you gotta push this in. You push it in and then you can pull the elbow out. And when you pull, and then this, when you push it, when you reseat it, you push it in, you kind of pull the whole thing out and it locks. Um, the, the pump that I got was kind of the same here. You just, there's brass fittings, but you just had to push the line in. And I trimmed off the lines just a little bit to get the, the dented part off the line was something very sharp so it didn't crimp anything. So this is the pump. I am not going to explain how to take this pump off. Well, I'm not going to show you how to take this pump off. I'm going to explain it because I've already gone through it. This pump sits in there just like that. And this valve block fits right on top of it like this, all on brackets. So <clears throat> this has bolts going through here, here, and then one back here. There's a spring and kind of like a sleeve deal that goes on there and washer. And a bolt comes down from the top. It's a 10 millimeter uh, hex. So you 
you can unscrew that but it's also a nylock so you have to get a wrench on the top on this one and a wrench on the top on this one this one here looks like like a welded stud and it's got a different setup here i had to take this off this off i let the the whole pump motor come down so i could reach behind it and put a wrench on top of where this bracket was and then a socket on the bottom and i undid it that way then you what i also did was i unhooked this i unhooked that so i had a better reach for these brass nuts now maybe you can get to these first to kind of help and, and just undo this one so then that whole then the whole pump can kind of pull away maybe that would be a better way to do it i don't know i didn't do it that way i waited i took this down and then i took this off out of the way and then i got to these fittings and, and unscrewed them and got those out and then the plug <clears throat> this is the control plug here this controls it this plug is a very important plug because this plug goes to your like thermostat if you will it's a wire that uh, check test checks the heat of this and this is why the system will say service your air suspension immediately because if this runs too long, it gets hot, disconnects the wire, and then shuts off, and then your service, your air suspension immediately, words come up on your dash. So if the pump doesn't run, that warning will come up. If it runs too long, that warning will come up. So if you lose an airbag and the airbag goes down, and your pump is trying to pump that up and it's not having any luck there it'll, it'll only pump so long overheat or at least the thermostat will trip so it doesn't damage the motor and kill the power and then the warning light comes on so once you understand how this system works it's fairly simple to deal with so i i show a video that I'm uh, on this video of changing this block. I changed the block, I didn't change the thing, I just explained how to do this, but I did show how to fill the tank that is mounted behind your back seat. And that will be with nitrogen. So the nitrogen, um, I just got a little tank. I kind of set it in there. I just got a little tank of nitrogen from my local gas place. I bought a regulator for it. Uh, the stuff's not really all that expensive, especially if you were gonna go have this changed at your dealer. This would be thousands of dollars, and I didn't wanna do that. Um, the other thing to do, I will make a note of, if this doesn't run, if you cannot, because typically you can hear this run. If you can't hear this run, check your fuses and your relay. There are three fuses and one relay to check. So when you open up your fuse block box in your engine bay, read down the words and find the fuses. There are three fuses and one relay. Maybe something like that's bad instead. The other thing that also could be bad is this thermostat wire that goes here. The vehicle's been in an accident, had some frontal damage in that, that wire could be damaged or broken or something like that. These are just some things that you want to just kind of look out for. I don't have, I haven't found anything that people really talk too much about this and I just kind of wanted to bring some light to it. Now, I'm not an expert at this. Uh, I'm just trying to give you the best I can give you. I, there might be some people out there that say something a little different, but generally speaking, this is the way it all works. Um, So, again, mine was a problem with lowering the vehicle. Like, for example, it would be stuck in off-road one or maybe off-road two, and I couldn't get the vehicle to come down. Uh, so, I had a scan scanner put on the vehicle, checked, 
and it said a valve problem. Well, we have a couple valves here and the valve block. So I didn't know which direction to go, so I took the valve block first. The other thing that I want to note is at this point in time, in 2023, this mo pump motor right here at the dealer is going to run you close to $900. I did not do that. I went to a company in Florida and bought a Chrysler rebuilt one. And it's only like 260 some dollars or something like that. The company is called Rebuild Master Tech, and that's in Florida. That's a, They didn't sponsor me to say that or anything, but if you're budget-minded like myself and you have to keep your vehicle running, I don't want to put coil springs in the vehicle, I want to make sure I still have my air suspension because it's a lot better ride, I did that. So, and they have a lifetime limited, lifetime warranty. So I'm not afraid of it. And it's all Chrysler parts. That's the important part. You don't have some cheap knockoff Chinese something or others. You actually have the Chrysler parts. So um, that is that. I will get into the video and then I'll show the vehicle working. Okay, this is a 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. It's got the 5.7 Hemi in it, and I'm having suspension issues. Um, the light on the dash, or the words on the dash, come up that tells you to tells you to service the suspension system immediately. What's happening is that the pump. Uh, air because it's got air ride suspension the air pump is running nothing's happening with the suspension so the pump then heats up and gets knocked out from the thermostat on it so what i'm doing is i'm going to change a couple things on it first off you got to do is you got to get into your fuse box there's a relay like this that's right there pull that out that's on a 16. Now there's other years that the relay box is over here. Pull that, pull the relay out. That'll stop the, the pump from trying to run while you do this. And um, <clears throat> should be, shouldn't be too bad. The system is relatively simple. There is a control that controls the valving and the motor or the pump together when the pump runs it trips whatever valving it needs to go to the front or the back uh, and that's why the vehicle usually goes you know up in the back first then the front then the back then the front uh, to lift it up uh, it's pretty simple i mean then the airbags and the airline so there's only so many things that can happen now the problem i'm having is that the jeep does not uh, go down I don't know if it, it did go up, but then I couldn't get it to come down. So I got it to come down eventually, and then I just left it. Um, so I know that's not an, an airbag or a leaky line. It is something to do with the valving or the control of the valving. The pump works. You can hear it run. It runs too long, heats up. The thermostat on the the thermostat wire that's on the the pump shuts the pump off, and that's when I get my warning. Uh, it was only really happening when it was really cold out, so time to start working on it. And the reason I'm viewing this side of the vehicle is because the pump is underneath the front section of this uh, bumper here, and so to get this off. We're going to have to take take this inner shield wheel well out back, and you know the pump is right there. If you jack this up, you can look underneath. You can see the pump. But to work on it, we need to work on it right here. So 
the one other thing that is in the system, obviously, is your these these things here, which tell you that which tell the vehicle where the height is. Um, those are normally plastic. The ones I have in there are metal and adjustable, so you can kind of adjust your height just a little bit without doing it with the program. So anyway, we're going to take this part and we're going to see what we can do. Okay, so now the air tank is, this is coming into the back seat. Um, I folded down the back seat on the driver's side and then this flap comes up and the air tank is right in here. And see, there's the valve. And normally it'd have a cap on it, so I just took that off. And this should be the same as an AC AC fitting. So you use your AC gauges and so you can fill this. Now this system is really full of nitrogen. Uh, I do know some people that would after that empty the system, they'd just fill this with with regular air, which works. Um, I'm in a colder climate half the year, so I don't want the moisture build up from the heat of the pump, condensation, and wrecking the valves. And that might be kind of what my problem is now, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to check the pressure in there for, for right now. So I know, because I know the system is works and it's up to where it's supposed to be i'm going to just check the pressure i think it should be 175 to 225 something like that but i will check it so i can match that all right the valve is on there i opened it up come over to my gauges and you can see kind of see those gauges that's sitting at 100 pounds um that's 100 pounds in normal position on the suspension. So that'd be um, in the first light of your, of your changer, you know, you got, you got off-road one and two, and then you have the standard drive part. That's where I'm at. So I'm at 100, 100 PSI right now. So when I let all the pressure out of this thing, when it's a normal ride, I want to I want to put it back to the 100 psi. I'm sure it's got some flexibility, but I don't think that I need to put it up any higher than that. Okay, so that's kind of figuring that part out. Now we're going to go to the front and start taking it all apart. So here's the system under the wheel well here. So I had to pull the, this back. There are rivets here, plastic rivets here and here. There is a, a bolt here. There is a bolt that went in here. This one here just twisted and popped out. And then there were several of the push-in, the push-in style. Um, locks. You know, you pull this the head out, and then you pull the whole thing out. Um, the plastic rivets. I'm just going to re-rivet it. I have a plastic riveter, so I'll just re-rivet that. But this is what we're looking at. We're looking at. I'm looking at changing this valve right here. The the lines, as you can see, you can barely see probably, but they're color coded. So this one is. This one here is blue, this is green, this is a light blue, this is a yellow, this is a white, and this is a brown. So, and this brown one looks like it's completely different than the rest. So, you can see it's marked right front, left front, right rear, left rear, and then uh, this one has a P on it, so that must be pressure. Yeah, it follows around to the, the pump. Here's the pump. So the pump pumps pressure into here. 
This valve behind here is electrically, there's an electric thing here, controlled, and the valve then tells what valves to go. This is gonna have, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a vent. Okay, so these systems are closed systems, which means that the pump takes air from the tank to fill the bags and takes, and then it takes air from the bags to fill the tank. Doesn't usually take outside air unless it's absolutely necessary, something happens and it needs it. So, so that's why there's nitrogen in these things. Um, Nitrogen doesn't have the, the moisture humidity in there. That's why I'm gonna fill it with nitrogen. But meanwhile, I'm gonna to try to get this valve changed and see, see what that's all about. So here's the valve. What I had to do was I unscrewed each one. See, there's one there, there's one there, there's a couple here. Um, unplugged the plug here there is a grabby thing on the side you can see it right right here so that grabs into this you can push this pull this and push that and it just popped out so that's that that's all it was and then i just took it and i snuck it right out right out through here came right out it's not that hard of a deal the hardest part is probably just unscrewing all your lines um i'm thinking i'm just going to keep i'm going to use these brass i'll probably replace this o-ring the new one has that on it I'll show you the new one. Here's the new one right here. Um, and that's it. So what this is, is you push on that and then this is a collar, this is a sleeve right here. And so when you tighten it down, this crimps on that a little bit. So, that's why I probably will just use this, these that are in here. I'll just change the O-rings. I think that makes the most sense to me. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with these guys. So, all right, well, I'm going to put the new one in, put it all together, show show that and then uh we're gonna try to start filling see what happens so there we go there's the new one is in everything's all color coded i did end up changing the nuts and stuff um you really need to after you take the old ones off you do need to trim just a little bit of the line off where it's all tore up from the last crimp so after you do that you can uh, you can put the new nuts on and everything. The thing that is, um, make sure when you cut the line, you have something nice and sharp so it doesn't squish it. You know, it, it cuts it smooth. So there it is. Now I got to go fill the tank. Little tip: I just pulled this piece out so I didn't have to keep flopping it up, and it just pops up just be careful just kind of it just pops up i took the whole thing off got it out of my way then what my problem was was the valve was too close to this piece here and yeah it flexes a little bit but i just couldn't get the nozzle in there because it's just too close so i started looking around at it and i grabbed this thing and i pushed it so i pushed the whole tank that way so now i have enough room to get this in here okay. and you, so I'm not gonna do it one-handed but that way I you can get to it that tank slides back and forth a little bit 
and it slides back enough that you can get that valve on there for your AC system. So just thought that'd be a good little tip. I'll continue on. So here's my setup. You can see I got the blue line here connected here. The yellow one I connected to, to itself. The red line here fit to my fit to my tank, my nitrogen tank. I just went down and got a nitrogen tank. Um, nitrogen's not that expensive. So I just got the tank. I figured I'll use it. Maybe I might need it a few times. Who knows? Anyway, I turned that on. I turned it on and slowly cranked that. And I watched this gauge here come up. I turned this and I turned this on. So I the, the nitrogen would come through here and then go out here. And you can see this is where the pressure was. It's about 120 PSI. Uh, and so that filled that tank. That's how that worked. So um, I wanted a little bit extra in there. I know it was 100 PSI when the bags were full, but the bags are empty. So I want to I want to see how this works. It's got 120 PSI. And I'm going to kind of plug it in and see what uh, what it does. It's all finished up. I got my relay back in here. Get the fuse back in. I did take that out too, even though you didn't have to, the relay. But that's one of the fuses. And then there's a couple other fuses around here too. You have to look and read on here to see where those all are. Um, we're going to start it up and see how it works. Okay, it's in park. I've kind of tested this out pre-hand, but so there it goes up. Of course, you can't feel it going up, but it's going up. Should be good. That means it was going back down. I'm going to go up. And it's rising. I don't know if you can kind of. Can't really tell. But that's that. Let's back up more. You can kind of hear it creaking. So that's good. So I'm going to go back down. Down. So it is working just fine. Um, in fact, I'm going to drive. It'll go all the way down now. So, I know what the problem is. The door is open. Don't work when the door is open. But it's going down now. You can feel, uh, I can feel it. You can't feel it. So, that was the problem. The problem was... problem wasn't the valve. The problem was the motor, the pump motor. That's the valve. So there we have it.